it's like the crew. Well, did but, you have any oh shit moments with the crew or even group sex where you were like, uh, oh my God, like I've looked at this for years and now I'm... I mean, I think with the crew, like, yeah, definitely, man, because there's really good stories and there's really interesting, like I learned things about Seven Seconds that I found uh, really um, compelling and, and, and kind of and kind of makes you revisit Seven Seconds uh, realizing how these guys grew up. Like, these guys didn't grow up like we grew up. Like, th these guys were poor. I mean, poor. It's homeless, living in a car with their mom, living in a one-bedroom apartment with their mom. I mean, it's rough. And they made this music that really speaks to kind of like suburban youth America during the 80s. It's just like, nails it like Kevin said the seven seconds of crew and, and, and the lyrics and the songs like it nails suburban America in 1984 when that record come out like just like the if you, the positive side of it like you know like Kevin's always been f you know forward thinking in his lyrics so there's not just boys fun which is about you know it's it, 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 it's about treating women as equals and and getting rid of your sexism macho freaking punk rock attitude it's written in 1983. Right. No one's writing a song like that. Colorblind, which is an anti-racism song. That's on the crew. Um, you know, uh, then there's the song like like Trust. Like Trust is a like kind of the first emo song. Right. You know what I mean? It's like a love song on a hardcore record. No one did that stuff. So I just I think there's just something really magical about that record that I th hope. I think people would still if you know the crew, and you get this deluxe, you, you've spent your money wisely. Because that's another thing too. Is like we're pricing records. That if another record company did the crew the way we're doing it, it'd be 40 bucks, 45 bucks to buy that because the gatefold with the booklet, like that's bound inside, like we're selling it for 30, you know, because that's what we're trying to do. We're trying, we're not trying to, it's a nonprofit. It doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, it matters not to lose money, but it doesn't matter about making money. It matters about putting on a good product and making sure everyone gets paid. Has that been difficult keeping costs down? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're, I'm learning. So yeah, I mean, that's why Eagle Vision's been our partner in to start this because we just didn't have that experience. They have all those contacts. Uh, and obviously Steve Reddy, the owner of Eagle Vision's a lifelong friend of both Matt's and I. So they, they're the perfect partner to help. Um, yeah, I've learned a lot about keeping costs. Like Circle Jerks Group Sex, they wanted to sell for 25. Really that record price should probably sell for 30. But they want to sell for 25. The band wants to sell for 25. Like it's their money. Like have at it, you know? So, uh, but yeah, you're, I'm learning. So I think like the cost, the cost will I'll be, it'll be easier to manage the costs moving forward. And a lot of it too is like on sort of looks wild in the street. We do a lot of fancy color variants and stuff. I might pull, we might pull back from that a little bit and just do solid. Cause that, that drives up the price too. Like just realizing like, look, like we'll give you a couple colors. I understand how this vinyl market works and everyone wants colors, but like, it's more important to tell the story right and make sure the music's remastered and proper, sounds proper to us. Like I'm not into record collecting, so it's like, you know, it drives me crazy when I go on Discogs and I see like the Circle Jerks record that we released last year is going for like $150. It's just like, come on, man. Oh, the one from Trust. The one yeah, that the already one, the, the one, the one that is the variance, like a three color variance, right. really rare. It was a thousand made. Okay. And at the time when we made that album, we, you know, we consulted everyone. Everyone was like, oh, you're not gonna sell any records. Like, and we're like, okay, that's okay. Like, we'll still try. And then we're like, we sold out of 4,000 records in a week. Well, 24 hours on the color variant. And then we sold out of them before street date. And then because the vinyl market's so jacked up, it took six months to get a repress. And we kind of missed, you know, that was a really tough lesson. Thank God, Circle Drugs and Keith Morris are so fucking cool that they're partners with us and they understand that it's not, you know, what we're trying to do, it's out of our hands. Like, you know, but lesson learned. Never, I'll never, you know, the next Circle Jerks record, which is Wild the Streets, that pressing is 15,000. Cause it's like, we're not gonna have that problem again when we're right. on a record. It's like, you know, that's another nice thing about doing it the way we're doing it with having Matt as a partner is we can take a chance financially a little bit and, and kind of have some records that you know, normally a record label needs to get rid of there. You can't hold on to records in your warehouse for longer than probably six months or else you're losing money. So, but with us, it's like, we, we, we can kind of afford to do that. So we're kind of looking at now like, Okay, let's just make sure the records are, we maybe overproduce a little bit and we sit on records longer so we're not scrambling trying to, you know, repressing. That's the thing that's frustrating. So it's like six months to get a repress, you know? I, I, before the second press of Circle Jerks, while the Circle Jerks group sex hit, I'd already put in a third pressing order. 
Because that's the world we're living in. Like, well, this might took a minute saw too, so we better put it in now. So then, is there, um, because, okay, Trust Package is very interesting because you guys are, you guys know where this is all headed. It's headed yeah, so there's a mission. To, there's a real plan to it. Digital. But right now, it's like you're steeped in this sort of analog yeah, yeah. world. So my question is, do you have sort of a, okay, we're like at some point, okay, we're not going to press this anymore. Or is it sort of just, well, we talk, that's a tough, that's the thing. That's a thing. Yeah. I understand where you're going with that. Like when originally when we first launched this, I think my mentality was, and I'm pretty sure Mouse was too. It's like, okay, we'll put out physical product to tell the story, to get it put in the press, talk about it. But then we'll just let it go out of press. The physical, and we'll just live digitally. Right now we're not doing that. Right now we're keeping, We'll keep the records we're putting out. We plan on keeping them in press for a while. Like we won't get to like the problem that happens with, with some of these old punk labels too is the quality starts because it becomes like, you know, like you, you look at some of these records. Uh, I don't want to name lab labels or bands, but I've check out, I'm going to say the competition, but check out some of those, our peers from the 80s who are still in business releasing records. A lot of those records are thin and there's no lyric sheet. They're not like, I mean, we got into hardcore and punk rock. This is a whole package. Like, the lyric sheet's important, yeah. <laughs> right? Thank so, you list, all like, of it. All of it. That's yeah. a part of the package. So when I know cost-wise, you know, you're talking like a buck fifty to cut out the lyric sheet. Maybe, you know, like, I understand that. because. But I look as like, we're going to put these records in press. They're going to be pressed. They're going to be pressed the way they are. Like, we're not going to do, you know. I won't say we won't ever go back to like the crew, but when we do, it'll be the crew with a lyric sheet, like just how B-Way had it. Like, right. You know, the, it'll live like, it at least a little, an elevated state. Um, but we'll see, man. Like, you know, uh, that's a problem. It'd be, it's a nice problem to have if it comes. I just, right now, like, yeah, it's a, uh, it's crazy. Volatile. The vinyl market's insane. We drive people crazy trying to put out a record right now. I got a final question for you. I might think of another one, but... What's it like? Because I know what the crew means to me. Like, like that's a fucking flawless record. Like to me, it's literally like listening to one song, and and, and it's awesome. What's it like? Like, I mean, that is a legitimate, yeah, like, it's important piece. Like Kevin Seconds is such an important figure yes. in music. I think I that mean, we all agree. It's an yeah. American icon. Yep. Like, um, one of the great American musicians. Like, I think up there with HR, with oh, Ian, with yeah, all of them. all of them. But even yeah. those guys are on par with, I don't know, Axl Rose and Slash. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whoever oh, you yeah, want to put Red Hot Chili Peppers. Whoever you want to put into music. Like, I put Ian and Jello and Kevin, those guys. They're, they're important people. They're like, important, important American music icons. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really exciting because it's like I said earlier, like, you're seeing like a, you know, part of when me and, when Matt and I sat down and talked about this, it, and Matt had said to me, which is the same thing, is like, look, like when we were kids, this kind of music rescued us, saved our lives. It, it got both Matt and I into a music business because like I fell in love with music because of hardcore and punk rock and went through, you know, I mean, whatever my journey has been, it's been a little weird, but like it's been in music the whole time. I've been on bands, I've been in merch, I've worked at record labels, I've managed bands, like put on shows. All of it is because Kevin Seconds yep. wrote a record called The Crew that I loved and Walked Together, Rock Together and was one of my favorite bands and same with Sean Stern and Youth Brigade or Pat Dubar and Uniform Choice or freaking Walter and Siv and Gorilla Biscuits. Like these guys inspired me and, and, and so as you kind of go through this music business, the idea is you're, we're going to give back. Like these guys got us onto the track. We've done okay for ourselves. Now let's, I want to spend the rest of my working life giving back to these guys. So it's, yeah, it's thrilling. It's exciting. You're talking, you're collaborating with Kevin Seconds and you're getting, you know, you're getting, we were friends, but we're not, you know, we're not as close as we were now. Like now we talk on a weekly basis. We're planning, you know, things. I can hear the excitement in his voice. I think, it's, you know, when Matt Penfield sits down with him and has this really great conversation about the crew and writing it, you see Kevin, like, being asked by a legit music journalist the same questions he would ask, say, like, Madonna, right? Like, it's that's how it should be. Yeah. And that's, like, the point, yeah. But, yes, I mean, we all love Seven Seconds. Like, it, it, like it'll be hard to top it for me as far as excitement, but I will say I am looking really, I'm really looking forward to Walk Together, Rock Together. That comes out next year. 
I'm really looking forward to Youth Brigade because I do love that record. And I think Mark and Sean Stern are like, especially in Southern California, are right up there with Golden Voice or whoever you want to put to putting music on the map in Southern California, hardcore music or punk rock. Um, <clears throat> but it's also been great. Like, you know, I was never the biggest Circle Jerks fan, admittedly, but I have so much respect for Keith Morris. Oh, yeah. Working with Keith Morris, I'm a huge Circle Jerks fan. I'm a huge Keith Morris fan because I get to, you know, I've had these dinners or these meals with Keith and just talk music and I realize what a true artist he is and the way he sees things and takes in that information is the way an artist would do it. Like, he's a real fucking deal, man. Like, and that's something I learned doing this record label. Because, you know, you always have respect. You start with Black Flag. He's Keith Morris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you're like, oh, like, you look at, like, you're, you're in it. Like, he is still for, I don't know how old Keith is. He's like 65, 66. I mean, he is engaged. He yeah. does music. He cares about young bands. You know, he, he, he really gets it. And that's exciting too. And so that's what's fun about this because at the end of the day, like all these bands are important in their own way, no matter who we're putting out, right? Um, but yeah, man, Seven Seconds is special. Yeah. I can't wait for people to see this record. It's, it's the story, it's gonna be great. The people are gonna be stoked.